Morning. I swear a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Total War Warhammer 3. That's right, it is time for some mindless self-indulgence because I love this game to pieces. I know it is of literally no interest to anyone watching this channel or currently following this channel, and I've got to be honest, don't really care that much. Not that I don't want to give you guys stuff you want, but as part of my whole thing of doing stuff I want to do in order to make this extreme time sink and emotional investment that I call this channel worthwhile, I also have to do things I want to do. And this is one of them. Also, if I want to have an audience who likes this stuff, maybe I should make this stuff and then people who like this stuff will show up. But, uh... This will never become a Total Warhammer channel, it's just, you know, sometimes I've got to indulge myself and I appreciate you guys allowing me to do so. Today, I wanted to play as our big boy Kolek, right? <laughs> this is funny. Bonk. <laughs> um, Kolek, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure many of you do, but some of you may not. Kolek's a big boy, right? Kolek's a real big boy, but Kolek can get bigger. So let's have a look at his effects real quick. Maximum active gifts, plus one for gifts of chaos undivided, so that allows you to stay in the middle of the road between all four. Gods of Chaos, Dark Fortress Settlement Buildings, Grant Additional Dragon Ogre Warband Recruitment Capacity, Dragon Ogres are great, Shaggoths are better, but Ogre, just standard Ogres are pretty good, and Kolik gains plus 5% weapon strength, mass, and armor for each currently vassalized fashion. Faction, sorry, I'm all over the place because I'm kind of excited. But mass is kind of the funny part there, because you see, every time Kolik gets a vassal, establishes a vassal, subjugates a faction, brings more Norsekin tribes under his heel, whatever you do, he gets bigger. As in physically bigger. So today, or indeed for the duration of however long I decide to do this for, we're going to make Kolek big. We're gonna make him a big boy. And his personal Lord effects is minus 25% uh, soul cost for a Gift of Chaos. I can't remember what Carnage Incarna is, so it doesn't matter. Less upkeep for Dragon Ogres and Dragon Ogre Shaggers. That's really good. And Missile Resistance for Chaos Monstrous, Infantry, and Monster Units, which means those Dragon Ogres are not going to get shot very... Well, they are going to get shot, but they're not going to take much damage. I usually play Warriors of Chaos as Bellacore. Because I really like you Bellacore. Shall enact my vengeance. I think he's fun. And I like the way he fights. He's not necessarily the strongest warrior of Chaos Lord, but he does fight in a fun way, and I quite like him. I like starting in Albion, all that jazz. I've never really played as Kolek. So, for the purposes of this series, two things, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, the reason I'm doing this at all is because I was like, today's a day where I think I'm going to do my own thing. I wonder what I'll do. And I was originally going to do a one-off, and I thought, instead of doing that, why don't I start an ongoing series, and then every time I just kind of feel like doing something different from normal, I'll do this, and then people who are interested can tune in and check it out. I can't remember if I said there were two reasons for what I said. I was, let's just get in there. Let's check the difficulty options first. Yep, this is all fine. Hold, <laughs> hmm. Let's have some fun. Fuck it. <laughs> Let's go. About the realms of chaos, the borderlands of the mortal world form a ring of shadow that surrounds the ultimate darkness within. Contrary to the arcane creatures and powerful beings that lurk across this nightmarish landscape, the northern extremes are undoubtedly part of the material world, but inevitably tainted by their close proximity to the realm of chaos. Should one travel into the wastes, they would find themselves laboring beneath a storm-shaken sky, continuing at their mortal peril. Words alone are incapable of describing that which lies beyond Oblivion's Veil. So I remember the other thing I wanted to say, is I'm going to treat this series as if A, you don't know much about the Warriors of Chaos, and B, you haven't played this game much, if at all. For the purposes of inclusivity, you know. I like the idea of making War uh, Total Warhammer 3 videos and having people be like, Hey, I think I want to start playing this. I just hope you're rich because, oh my god, the DLC. There's so much. And you need to buy three games. It's a whole thing. It's not good. I'll make a video about that someday. I might even do a Foreman Talks. That'd be a good idea. But, yeah. We're going to approach this as if none of us know what we're doing because I'm not a pro fucking Warhammer 3 player. I'm just reasonably good. I'm more experienced than good, I'd say, is the key point there. So... This will not be an optimal speed run to conquer most of the world in a certain amount of time. I'm just gonna... Honestly, I'm gonna try and vassalize as many things as possible and make Kodak big. That's kind of my goal. That's my plan. That's what I want. Before the, mountain god. the Mountain God. 
How they play, Heralds of the Tempest. Collect the souls of mortal factions throughout your campaign for sacrifice to the dark gods in return for faction-wide boons granted by gifts of chaos. Erect dark fortresses across the north and vassalize the local tribes as you conquer Norsk and homeland capitals to establish your centers of power. Instantly muster warband units into your armies from your lord's localities to quickly build your military might. Upgrade units into more powerful forms while devoting them to your chosen god to grant them dark authority army bonuses. There is quite a lot going on with the Warriors of Chaos for nowadays. I don't feel the need to really give this a big comprehensive guide because a lot of you are probably familiar with the Warriors of Chaos by now, they've been out for a while, but there is still a lot to go over for the purposes of doing a general LP and talking about what's going on. Oh thank god you're a spellcaster because Colette can't cast spells, so that's perfect. We haven't even unlocked Git. Yeah, we need to take a settlement first, so let's do that. We'll go into here, we'll get Scrutiny of the Dark Gods, this is very good. Well, it's just research, but real research is good, you know. We've got 1,000 souls, we've got 6,000 currency, which with these guys is favor with the Dark Gods. Interestingly, Eye of the Gods is not something I ever dealt with as um, uh, Bellacor, so I don't really know what that does. That's interesting. Unless it is a part of Bellacor's campaign and I just didn't fucking notice, which is possible. Two Dragon Ogres, that's a good start. But let's have a look at Kolek. Let's actually have a look at him, okay? So yeah, 10% Missile Resistance for Chaos Monstrous Infantry and Monster Units. Extra Authority for Undivided. Uh, soul Cost, Upkeep, yeah, that's all fine. Let's actually have a look at what he gets himself. What's unique to our big boy, okay? So we get a Bound ab Ability that basically explodes people. That's nice. Three times, that's very good. Storm Rage, which is a uh, self buff. And he also gives this ability to Dragon Ogre and Dragon Ogre Shagath units. And then the rest of that is normal. Moving Mountain, even more mass, and weapon strength during siege battles, armor and spell resistance, weapon strength and bonus versus large, a dazed contact effect that reduces speed and melee defense on enemies, and charge bonus for all Dragon Ogres and Dragon Ogre Shagaths. Campaign movement range and casualty replenishment rate, which is just amazing, you always want that. And the Sun Eater, undivided authority, demonic, which means he doesn't run away, he just disintegrates when his leadership is too low. And minus eight leadership for enemy armies in region, okay. So, Kolek really focuses around making himself strong. He does buff the, um, the Dragon Ogres, but really his focus is on himself. You want Kolek to be big and stronger, and in fact he can do that. But, uh, yeah, I've never played much with Kolek. We did a little multiplayer game once where I played as him for all of 20 minutes, but never really played him properly. So. Warriors of Chaos have a rather unique way of recruiting units. Instead of doing normal recruitment, you get a set amount of units in a region depending on what's built there, what kind of terrain it is, what the corruption is, all these kinds of things, and you can influence the chance in which another one will be provided every turn. But... You know, typically it is what it is. It's quite random, to be honest. So I'll get those, for instance, because we're low on units and more units is always good. Marauders are great because they are your building block for your army. Because if we go into Warband Upgrades, you'll see all of this. And yes, this is a real proper thing. And it's great. So, I don't know about you, but whenever I play a faction, um, one of my problems is that my armies become out of date. As it were, I'm running too many Tier 1 units too late in the game because I can't be bothered to change everything over. Well, now you don't have to. Because when these guys get to, what is it, rank 5, experience rank 5, I can spend a bit of money to upgrade them into Chaos Warriors. And then when those Chaos Warriors get to, like, rank 5 or rank 6, I can upgrade them to Chosen. And I could make them Aspiring Champions, but you don't want an army of Aspiring Champions. Unless you can make that broken, I don't know, I've never tried. But the point is, this is a great system. This allows you to upgrade your units without having to disband them and recruit them and lose all your experience. You do lose most of your experience for promoting them, but... It's made up for by sheer convenience. With Chaos Trolls, for instance, you can upgrade them to become armored. So you don't have to spend two turns up recruiting armored trolls. You can just go for it. And this all plays into the fact that these guys don't have recruit times anyway. So it all plays into itself. Uh, we don't have gifted units at the moment, which is interesting. I figured we would. Let's have a go at Zok. Are you an ogre? You're a bitch. We'll give him a fight because... Um, I really want to engage in some rapid expansion this time around, because whenever I play this game in my own time, I'm far too timid and defensive, and we want to make Kolek big as quickly as possible. In fact, I already have a plan for how I want this campaign to start, or at least one of the first things I want to do. But one of the other first things I'm going to want to do as soon as possible is subjugate a faction that has uh, ranged units, so we can actually get some ranged units, preferably some artillery, to be honest, because we are lacking in artillery, and I love artillery. 
In battle, it's the only time a dragon ogre can die, so they fight with a powerful fury. So these guys are immortal on top of everything else? Let's have a look at them. I've never really looked at dragon ogres. They're pretty cool, it must be said. But they're not quite on the same level as Kolak himself. What a guy. Crackling with storm energy. What a fucking legend. And then there's a little chant man to cast his fire spells, which is lovely. Chaos Marauders. So we'll do it like that. So tactics aren't going to be too required here, to be honest. We've pretty much got this in the bag, but... Um, Oh no, I want Kolek to go with those guys. Uh, you can go there. You can go around that flank. You guys can fuck off over there and hit them in the back. Yes, very good. I like to use control groups. I know a lot of people don't. I do. It just helps me keep things simple in the middle of combat, which aids in micromanagement because you don't want to be faffing around with shit when everything's kicking off, especially if you've got spells to cast and stuff like that. Hop over their heads. Yeah, good lad. That's probably going to miss because there's a hill. I'm almost certain that's going to miss. Oh? Oh, you killed seven. That's actually pretty good. Credit where it's due. That's not bad. So we'll keep these guys around here. No point charging them in until the right time. Saber tusks. Do they count as large is the question? They're pretty big. They're bigger than a horse. I'd say it counts. Which means these guys should effectively tear them apart. They're not anti-large, so they ain't got much going on. Go in on them. Go in on them. Go in on them. Go in on them. Crush them. You hang about. You get ready to hit them in the back. Those guys are absolutely crushing them. He's chasing him down. Did you miss? How did you miss? He's huge! He's a big chubby boy! Alright, I'll just have all of you pile in on him then, I guess. That'll be fine, yeah. No, 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 actually... Yeah, you go after the Noblars, because they're a little bit more your speed. You guys come over here. Those guys got the Ogre Balls covered, not even a problem. They're now having a little duel. Yeah, it's going about as well as you'd expect. Oh wow, they lost that fight, interesting. I've been going on them so they don't take too many casualties. You come around here. Deal with them. You guys back off because you'll take casualties like nothing. Oh, we already won. Okay, cool. Good. All right, well. I keep forgetting that this was like, you know, a battle where we horrifically outnumbered them and I was kind of expecting more competition. Ah, uh, it's fine. They're going to get away, but that's okay. And we just let him run him down. So this has not been really been a test. Although it must be said that Kolek kicked the fuck out of him with zero problems. Not really been a test of our capabilities, as it were, but... Um, my biggest problem, I think, with Total Warhammer 3 in terms of playing it, and it's not really a fault of the game design in any way, shape, or form, but I just auto-resolve too much. Especially as the Warriors of Chaos, because you have so much strength in auto-resolve, the game will give you favorable outcomes almost all the time. Which means I get bored, I get complacent, because I'm just sat there like, attack, or resolve, win, attack, or resolve, win. I want to get on the ground and see the fights happening and watch Kolek squish people, it's fun. I like setting up formations, I like pulling off tactics and strategies, I like seeing my units fight. And I'm sure if you're here to watch a fucking Total War series, you probably want to see that as well. So I'm going to try and push myself to fight more of these battles. It's not as if there's any real pressure on this series anyway, we're just hanging out, so it's not as if I have to go quick. Just fucking play the video game. Now I'm told the king that east belongs to orcs, the east belongs to Morglim, the east is green. I remember Morglim, what a legend. And by a legend, I mean a fucking pain in the ass, because he would... If I'm right, is he the one who holds Karak 8 Peaks, the uh, Crooked Sun mutinous gits? Because God, he would just not give that up in Warhammer 1 or 2. That was such a nightmare. It's much easier to take it now because you have a bit, a bit more tactics to work with. But back then, my God. It was a pain. Crush them. No problems. We already unlocked the regiment, uh, Summoners of Rage. That's strange. I might actually recruit those. You can't? Okay, never mind then. Alright, well, never mind. 
Unassigned skill points. Marvelous. First thing you want is dominating presence because ex extra experience per turn is godlike. And for this army, it's actually even more important because these guys need experience to level up. Can these guys level up to become... You can't level them up at all. Okay, show ogres are ogres. Shaggoths are shaggoths. It's different. That's fine. Scouting. We want to get some magic gear as soon as possible. Now, why don't you go in there, stomp them back. This is actually a bigger fight. Now, in some cases, you might be wondering, like, Foreman, why are you even playing these? Like, they're decisive victories, they're easy to win. Like, I know you said you want to fight battles, but sometimes it seems pointless. And in many cases, you would be right, but there are two things to consider, and it's two reasons why you should push yourself to fight more battles, rather than being lazy like I usually am. First of all, Aura Resolve does not tend to be nice to you when it comes to casualties. You will take unnecessary casualties, because the game assumes you take both armies and smush them against each other, regardless what units you have. Your archers will run into melee. That's what the game thinks. So, it's often better to play yourself to keep casualties low, to keep the health of your campaign strong, because you're not going to get caught out by some random, uh, random army coming out of nowhere, and you're like, shit, if only my troops weren't so bashed up, and it's like, well, that's why you play it yourself. Um, the other reason is experience, and I don't mean experience for your troops, I mean experience for you as a player. The only way to get better at the game is to play it. The only way to get better at commanding your troops is to play the game. The only way to figure out what your troops can and can't do, what they can and can't handle, and how they fight, how fast they are, all these things, is to actually play. You have to play. You don't- I mean, you don't have to play. You could honestly play this game or resolving the whole thing if you wanted to. But if you don't want to do that, then you need to play to get better at it. It is definitely 100% that simple. And you hit them with a jolly good fireball. Oh, they're a bit too far away. Can't wait to get you a horse. Have a look at this guy. What a cool guy he is. I love the Heralds of the Tempest have blue. I love blue. Blue's my favorite color. Look at my blue guys doing their blue things. God, I love blue. Also like fire. Oh, that nearly hit the troll. God, that was scary. Ugh. Go on, bean him, bean him, bean him, bean him. Yeah! That killed him. That did kill him. And kills inflicted on ogres mean a lot more than anyone else because, uh, they have low entity numbers. We want their eyes! Clear the shadows! There we go. And then you come around here. And you just be threatening over there. Dragon Ogres are coming in, they're anti-large, in case you forgot, so they are well suited to dealing with Ogres. Especially since these Ogres are not anti-large. Also, the Ogres didn't charge, which is like their main benefit in combat, is that they um, gain a lot of bonuses to charge. Those Marauders are going to get fucked up, I don't know how else to tell you this. Actually, they've split up their numbers a bit, so eh, it's not so certain. He's just dealing with Noblars, absolutely taking him out. Almost a waste of his talents, to be honest. Chase them off. But we've practically already almost won the battle. You guys go for them, you go for them. They're trying to run away, it's not working. Well, I know what the Ogres are actually trying to do. Ogre units will frequently disengage and attempt to recharge, because that's when the most powerful is when they're charging into combat. It's very annoying when you're trying to fight them in the trees, because they will attempt to leave the trees and then charge you again, which can turn the fight on its head. But if you can sort of, if, as long as you don't play their game, as long as you continue to engage them favorably, ogres in melee aren't that big a deal. It can be dangerous, but it's all about fighting them properly. There we go, and we don't need to run them down because this is a salmon battle, so... Also, since uh, Warhammer 2, in Warhammer 2, units or commanders gained experience depending on the quality of the victory. Whereas in Warhammer 3, it's based on kills. Now, when you win a settlement battle, they all die. So, you get max amount of experience for it. But it's lucky, because it was really annoying back in Total Warhammer 2, where I think I would fight a battle that I really wasn't supposed to win, and somehow managed to clutch out, and the game would go like Pyrrhic victory, and then I'd get fuck all for doing it, even though I went above and beyond to get that victory. And it really wasn't Pyrrhic, I actually did quite well. But the game is very harsh when it comes to the quality of the victory it decides to give you. 
42 souls. I think we deserve a bit more than that, but whatever, it's fine. So yes, this is our first um, dark hold, dark fortress, whatever you want to call them. We'll occupy and vassalize it, and then let me explain to you what the fuck just happened in case you're not aware. So, these dark fortresses, which are symbolized by this little symbol here, are basically the settlements you want to have as the Warriors of Chaos. These are the only places you can well and truly build up. Everywhere, anywhere, and everywhere else you take, you try to capture will basically be a settlement building and one building you can build underneath it, which will usually be something that doesn't really make money as much as just provide benefits to units in the region. If you want to actually build yourself up as a faction, it's the Dark Fortresses you want. And these Dark Fortresses are essentially like the figureheads of each of these provinces, and there is usually a... Um, Norskan tribe affiliated with it. In this case, it's the Dolgan. By taking this, we immediately vassalize the Dolgan. They're now under our control. And as we take more settlements that aren't Darkholds, we can par them off to the Dolgan to increase their strength and therefore increase their ability to serve us, which is great because it gets you, you let, lets you be the final boss, main antagonist of some film or game as you build up your force of evil dudes to do stuff. We'll get that for now for the extra growth so we can grow the challenge stone as quickly as possible. But this has gone quite nicely. May as well foster cults, I guess. Level up, Kolek. What can we give him? Root Marcher, more campaign movement range, and might be worth going into some of this. Premonition is useful, especially if you end up going against Skaven. Chaos Unchained is just nice to have mainly for that campaign movement range, but the extra souls is also very useful, because now we can actually talk about the souls mechanic. So these are gifts of chaos. They cost souls, and they require an upkeep of souls, but they provide you with benefits. Lots and lots of benefits. I particularly like Raider's Raymond, because it makes your marauders not suck. So I'm going to get one of those. We don't have a lot of souls, so I might refrain from getting the other one. Oh, I can't even do the other one right now. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, Raider Raymond is great. The other great one, I can't remember the name of it right now, but it had the ability Shatterstone, which basically turns sieges into a joke. Unless you're against really unfair odds. Just sons. Well, our more of our enemies are over there. Fortress of Eyes is owned by the Imperial Wardens. We're going to want to go to war with Cathay. Cathay, Cathay, whatever, hey. Um, there's also something else we want to do over there, but we've got to get there first. Fireball, thank you. Any units around here? No. Gifted units. A Hell Cannon? Yes, please. God, I love Hell Cannons. No one's a high enough level to rank up yet, so no need to worry about that. Dolgan, do you want to trade? Always ready for yes, a you do. Contest. Good. Yes. And then as soon as possible, we'll want to build a uh, outpost in their stuff. It just helps keep them alive and we get some units out of it. It's all good. But they'll probably build an outpost in the Challenge Stone, which will help us defend it because it'll increase the garrison. So that'll be quite nice. You dare? You dare? Have you not seen how big Kolek is? He's big. He's girthy. 275 factions currently in play. Watch that number fucking drop. It already did. Holy shit. I looked down, looked up, and it went to 274. And that's the first turn. 272. Three factions dead in the first turn. That's not unprecedented, it just always surprises me. <laughs> Goddamn. So part of the beauty of how the um, Warriors of Chaos recruitment system works is that you can very much sort of grab more troops on the fly and in a much better way than the Horde system in um, Total War 2. You can just pick up more troops as you go along. I gotta be honest, and this comes from a guy who doesn't really know a lot about balance, so you'll have to forgive me on this front, but Warriors of Chaos, in terms of their campaign mechanics, do feel a bit broken. They're a bit OP. Because, like I said, I can auto-resolve a Warriors of Chaos campaign so fucking easily. And then if the game's like, aha, this battle is going to be a valiant defeat, I'm like, well, I know I'm going to win because it's a valiant defeat. <laughs> like, the valiant defeat is something I could very much turn into a victory. And considering the fact that our Marauders with uh, Raiders Raymond are already at like melee attack 42, which is high for this early in the game. We've already got two units of Dragon Ogres for fuck's sake. Trolls, like... Most of the Chaos Warriors faction, or Warriors of Chaos faction, their units fight really well. Even Marauders, and Marauders suck. Except they don't. 
It's more a case of they suck, but they do what you need them to. They're definitely not your damage dealers, but that's not what you need from them. All in all, you're just looking for melee infantry to tie up the enemy's melee infantry while you get the real stuff planned, such as, you know, sending your dragon ogres around the side, or your ogre or trolls to just smash up something. It's a long time from now, but I really want to show you guys a, um, a Helm and Gorse campaign, because oh my god, you can turn zombies into something ridiculous in there. But that's then, and this is now. We need to go, we need to head east. We need to go east. We need to see what's happening in the east. We can give that to the Dolgan and that'll be nice. Oh, there, yeah, if we could subjugate the Flesh Greeders. That's another vassal faction, which gives me exactly what I want. I don't know, we'll evaluate our options when we get there. More units, yes, please. By this point, we have more than enough flanking units and need more mainline infantry, so that works out. Challenge Stone is doing its thing. Um, I will say, in terms of building production, stuff like that, like settlement, financial production, Warriors of Chaos are off to a bit of a slow start. This is like one of the few things that actually bounces them out. But your finances start off pretty weak, but they can also become very, 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 very rich if you set things up the right way, which I'll talk more about as it becomes relevant. Brunus Bulwark. Yeah, I want that. Yeah, you give me that. Now, I'm planning to do a lot of fighting, so our souls shouldn't become an issue, but we'll see. Maybe it will become an issue. You can always just get rid of your gifts if you're running out of souls. I don't know what happens if you run a soul deficit. I've never let it happen, but it can happen, I guess. Obey me! Obey me! No, no, I won't. I'm the sunnier. Now, we've already got one vassal, but of course, one vassal is not enough to make Kolek grow to any noticeable difference in size. But that's one of the reasons why I'd like to subjugate those ogres. Plus, when it comes to vassals, I find it's better to have a million shit vassals than one good vassal, because it actually leads to more armies. Now, they're lower quality armies, but they're still more armies. Oh my god, you can't get there this turn, are you fucking kidding me? Fine. It's fine, just raid for this turn. It does. Because I'm the Dark Powers. It's me. Now, because... Oh, hello. Goodbye, Bull. I guess he's decided to leave. He doesn't want anything to do with us. He knows he can't win. Now, playing as Kolek, who is an undivided Warriors of Chaos ruler, you'll notice we're not really doing anything with the other Chaos Gods yet. Nothing going on with uh, Zinch or Slanesh or Nurgle or Korn, but that will change. That will change. In fact, that's going to change very dramatically, hopefully, relatively soon. Give us the Volary. Give me it. Yeah, that should be fine. The casualties are virtually non-existent. The more troops you have, the better it is. We can subjugate them. I think I will. Keep us fed, who else? Good. Good. Now we have ogres. I will destroy. Weapon strength is going up. Where can I check mass? Unit size. Mass 6,601. So, um, Kolek will knock most things out of the way as he moves, which is quite good. Kindle flame. Good. Now we see. Yes. Bring the storm. Bring the storm. Mm. Hearts of iron. The gold smile. Should at least let Kolek have some bonuses to his army. So the fortress of eyes is our next objective for sure. Move. Big rewards over there. We'll get. A unit of hounds and be done there. And then we'll start trying to save up for that outpost. We actually have two outposts we need to get now. So, um, yeah, money's going to be a premium <laughs> for the foreseeable future. Uh, it's fine. Uh, we need money to upgrade that. So, uh, that's going to be a while yet. We're getting 27 per turn on vassal tribute, which is pathetic. But as these guys build themselves up, they make you more and more money. So, it'll get better over time. And if anyone from here starts giving us grief, we just tell our vassals to defend the challenge stone, and we're good to go. In theory, anyway. We're not at war with them yet, so I'm going to force march over there so we can hurry this along. Is that a bad idea? Yes. Really. You shouldn't force march very often, but hey man, we got things to do. I want to take the Fortress of Eyes. Ah. Attuned to Ulgu Boon. I don't know what that does. 
the mountains. So I can I didn't even talk about the path of glory. So chaos characters, uh, with the exception of legendary lords, can do certain things to gain rewards and basically gain stuff from here. So by becoming attuned to Ulgu, I don't know how I got that. Don't ask me because I don't know. He got a bound spell. He's got a single use of Penumbral Pendulum, which is a really good shadow spell. I love that spell, and now he can do one for free every single battle, which is great. You can also use Marks of Chaos to transform them into different units, but I'm going to keep Chance as an undivided sorcerer because, and I haven't even talked about this yet, authority of the different Dark Gods affects the units involved in various ways. So we're going to focus on Undivided here because it's most relevant. I'm not going to try and go through all of them right now, but I want to keep Kolek Undivided because Dragon Ogres are Undivided and therefore keeping high Undivided Authority will benefit with lowered recruitment cost, increased casualty replenishment rate, lowered upkeep, which is always amazing, and Warband upgrade cost reduction. By getting this high, you start lowering upkeep costs, and we all know that lowering upkeep costs is ideal. In fact, it's exactly what you want because um, upkeep costs for Warriors of Chaos get quite high, especially when you're doing those Warband upgrades. So yeah, better to try and get that going as much as possible. Hence why I want to keep Chant as an Undivided Sorcerer. But it is very cool using the uh, Mark of Chaos shit to transform your guys into uh, being dedicated to different Chaos Gods, like the Slanesh Chaos Lord is really cool, the uh, Zinch Chaos Sorcerer Lord is really cool, all of them are really cool, it must be said, like Aspiring, the Exalted Hero, Nurgle are really cool, got big two-handed axe, they're sick. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do, they're very fun to interact with. You've done the Tusk Sun, wait, does that mean, yeah, now Grimgore's right on our doorstep, which I do not like. But I've got stuff I want to do over here first. Hopefully our vassals can help deal with that if it becomes a problem. Take the Fortress of Eyes. I want this. You will give it to me. We'll fight a siege. Sieges are fun. I like sieges. Everyone likes sieges. I think I've talked about this before in a video, but sieges are so much more fun. Oh, they don't even- they're sallying out. Do they not have walls? Why would they not have walls? Whatever, this will be easier then. But I guess um, sieges in Total Warhammer 3 are so much more fun because in Total Warhammer 2, you fought sieges more like a real life siege in which you used basically sub uh, subversive tactics and a focus on range to just ruin the defenders before you even get close to the wall. But the way they've changed things around now, that's not really an option and the game encourages you to basically helms deep it, charge the walls, get on the walls, fight them, and it makes for a lot more fun and interesting battles. So they're using this big thing here to inform their formation, and that's very good, except for the fact that these trolls are going to horrifically maim them, and it's going to be really funny. In fact, yeah, what we'll do, we'll plop these over there, and we'll have the, oh, we'll have the trolls hit them, and then the dogs hit them in the back. That'll be nice and easy. Over here, it's a bit of a, they're going to funnel us a bit, but that's okay. That's what the master's bid. Fuck ton of those, and then we'll send the Dragon Ogres round. Cut through there, and then they can come around the back. I forgot we had a Hell Cannon, that will make things a lot easier. And Kolek will join this side, and you... Do you have a horse? Oh, you have a horse, brilliant. Okay, you can go there. Uh, and we'll just quickly group everyone up, so that I can select them all without having to faff around. Don't need to select him. And then you two, yep, yep a Rooney. okay. Get over there. Notice that I'm not using my control groups. You know, that's a real Chad move, I think. It's to set up control groups and then not use them. Uh, and then you guys come around there. And then, where are you? You come over here. I've got something for you to do. Set up like that so that he actually keeps in formation because that is going to be better for us. About there. About there. About there. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're forming up for it. Yes, yes. I didn't actually kill any of them, funny enough. Okay, well, you've just ran ahead anyway, so fuck it. Plow into their life. Fuck it. Fuck it. When things change, you change. Just pile into them. Just pile into them. Just pile into them. 
See? We're, we're actually too strong for them anyway, so it doesn't even matter. You should probably stop firing. No, no, turn that off. Uh, you're just gonna hit our own troops. Here's what we'll do. We'll set this up a bit over here. You come around the side. That's a foregone conclusion. Now you hit them, you hit them in the back. Good. We practically won over here. There's nothing else to say. Kolak, start going around the back so no one knows you were there. Jade Warriors are pretty cool. I like Jade Warriors. I actually like playing Cathay. They're, uh, they are fun to play. I beat Village multiple times with just armies of peasants. It is possible. You can do it. It's just hard. But with a little bit of chicanery, you can totally make it happen. We're basically waiting for army losses by this point, which will come very fucking soon because we're trashing them and the balance of power is ridiculous. They're getting murdered. Oh, it's not a contest and it's over. Good stuff. But I do stuff like this because the game would be like, if I was to resolve resolve it, the game would be like, oh, the war dogs went first and charged directly into the front of their lines and suffered heavy casualties, which is completely unnecessary and results in a situation wherein you're waiting ages for units to um, replenish or going into battles at like half strength because you've suffered unnecessary casualties from auto resolve ungabungering it really too hard whereas when you go into actually playing the battle yourself you're still kind of ungabungering it just slightly more tactically just a little bit of tactical ungabunga that's green skins in a nutshell god i love playing green skins well, I'll definitely do that at some point. I think the next one I'd want to do is Helm and Gorse, though. So I want to show off the power of having uh, zombies that punch like three times above their weight. I'll go and I'll, I'll, <laughs> I know I'm making strong statements there, but I'll go into more detail on that another time. You know, if we actually do Helm and Gorse. 63 souls. I feel like we got a bit more than that, but whatever. Yeah, this is a dark fortress, so we're definitely going to want it. Good, good, good. Oh, I could devote him to Zinch. I'm not gonna, but I could. Or Slanesh. I'm not gonna, but I could. Yeah, the Volary is owned by them who are our vassal, so that's very good. Spread more chaos. Always more chaos. Now we've got enough money there, we can upgrade our initial Dark Fortress, which would be good for money. Kolek leveled up. You love to see it. We get devoted of chaos because we're probably going to end up in conflict with Cathay soon. Yeah, there's the snake gate. Snake gate. Funnily enough, our initial um, focus is not going to be the snake gate. It's actually going to be the puppets of misrule. Because I've decided I want a legendary lord. In fact, I want a legendary lord rather soon. So I'm going to go fucking get one. Now, is it going to go as simply as that? Uh, probably not. But... I like Warrior Wizard. I like having my sorceress be able to defend themselves. It's probably not going to go that simply, but I am going to go try. Because I'm a relatively a decent commander. Relatively. And only decent, not great or good. And I reckon I can fuck them up. We'll probably take the Dragon's Crossroad first, though. Although I don't need that. And it's, um, yeah, it's owned land of the Usuk. So I need to find out where the uh, Puppets of Misrule are, where their fortress is. It's the Red Fortress, but we don't know where it is exactly. It could be there, it could be over there, we're not sure. Red Fortress is down there. Okay, so we'd have to go through the Dragon's Crossroad. I suppose I could burn it. I could burn it. I can do what I want. Uh. Lothar. Kazag, Warriors of Chaos. I've never heard of you. Who are you? You own Bloodwind Keep. Okay. Well, we can deal with you in a minute. But I'd rather deal on the, with the puppets first. Although I could just breeze in there and smash them. I don't know. We'll figure it out as time goes on. We've got some more research coming in. Things are going well. Any upgrades to be done? Nah. Nah, these are still ranked two. Nah, we're alright. We good. Now, I could diplomatize with them, but frankly, I don't see the point. So, I probably won't. May as well crush them and take the Dark Fortress for myself. More Dark Fortresses means more money. 
which we desperately, desperately need. <laughs> like, really desperately. And then, I don't know, do we focus on destroying Cathay, or do we go back and deal with Grimgore? We might deal with Grimgore. What does he offer me? Your gods will like this idea. Uh, you know what, actually, I think they would. But I do want some money out of you. There we go. At least dissuades him from declaring a surprise war on me. It doesn't mean he won't, it just means he's less likely to do so. I have no real desire to go after Grimgore right now. He doesn't really have anything I want. I think there might be some- how <laughs> Punch my desk. I think there might be some dark fortresses down where he is, but I don't think there's many. Saber Mountain? Is Saber Mountain a dark fortress? I don't think so. Nah, oh, Nangao is a fucking dark fortress. God, I want that. Um, yeah, no, he doesn't really have anything I want, whereas Cathay has a lot of things I want. More reason to go over there. Yeah, we're gonna want Culling of the Weak, because we need more souls as soon as possible. We're already running low. In fact, in the interest of getting over there... Yeah, if I start conquering my way through here, and then come down here and attack the Red Fortress, that might make a bit more sense. So we could deal with, uh... Kazag first. Which we can do with extreme ease, because he's right on my doorstep in Force March. <laughs> oh, buddy. Lothar, you trust me way too much, my friend. I'm so sorry. No. That was not a smart move. Done and done. Taken care of. That is a... P potentially really troublesome army easily dealt with with the benefit of them being on force march and me getting to make use of my own garrison fucking perfect thanks guys wow and we have enough money yes i'll tell you what we should do i'll tell you what we should do while we've got the cash we'll give the flesh greeters an outpost and then we can have some ogres Now, I want you to get Burning Head, because that spell is sick. So fucking good. I like all the laws of magic, but there's always something nice about um, fire magic, where you can just... It's the Oongabunga of magic, really. You don't have to think about what you're doing, just cast the spell, hit the dudes, and be done with it. There is still some tactical application, of course, but for the most part, it's just make enemy dead and also smell like roast. Done and easy. I don't think we'll be able to get anything really worthwhile from Iron Storm, so we might just burn it to the ground. We get souls, or we could sack it for money. Depends how much money. If it's not much money, then we're definitely going to want souls, because that's constantly ticking down. And if we raise it, we could probably get the ogres to actually colonize it, which would make things better for them. Why are you dragging me across the map, you bastard? Shut your fucking mouth. Star Crusher. I didn't even look at this. This is his quest weapon. Undivided authority, great. Melee attack plus 16. Magical attacks, weapon strength, armor piercing weapon damage, and the ability Star Crusher for more splash attack power and more armor piercing damage. And it'd be against green skins. I think we could probably handle that, but I um, don't think I'll do it right now. I'd like to deal with Kazakh first, because he's our immediate enemy, and once he's gone, we can take a moment to sort of upgrade ourselves and improve ourselves. Have we found any... We still haven't found any magical items. That's upsetting. I'm going to fight this manually because I think I can actually win it with almost zero casualties. Now, I could be dead wrong there and this will actually be a disaster, but... Personally, I think with the combination of artillery and spells... We're not going to lose much and we want to keep as many troops healthy as possible for when we go after their Dark Fortress. And then we will we'll probably only need like a turn to heal, then we can get the Star Crusher and then we can go on to the Red Fortress. Which is something we're definitely going to want to get the Star Crusher because it will give Kolek magical attacks which is useful against demons. Now Kazakh's not really making use of demons probably because he's a low level undivided lord but the puppets of Misrule are led by Village, who is actually the real deal serious business so we want to make sure we're ready and making sure we're ready for that comes down to dealing with these guys in a suitable manner so marauders i'd really prefer yeah to be firing at chaos warriors get more money per shot as it were more value we 
we'll spread out our wool not wolves war dogs oh have i yeah that's not how i wanted to set that up put them into groups I am awake. That's what I say every morning. I just scream, I am awake. And then I am. And the ground shakes. Good stuff. Okay, I uh, actually want you on your own. So I can tell you to fire on specific targets. There they are. We'll bring our... War, yeah, we'll bring our war dogs forward to provide them with a bit of cover. I wasn't expecting them to be quite so aggressive with their dogs. Take, take a moment to fight them, it's fine. Um, let's throw that over there. They can, cr yeah, they can crush them. Do a bit of damage to them. There honestly aren't enough of them to get decent casts, so we're just gonna have to make do with what we can. That'll do some damage. The war dogs have taken care of them, very good. Those Warriors of Chaos are absolutely fucked. Uh, I do like the Warriors of Chaos music, I have to say. Got a good vibe to it. Has a sense of, uh, of uh, stress to it. Throw a spell at them, it'll be funny. You guys, back off. Good, easy. Charge them. Shoot them instead. You pull back because you don't need to be over there doing that. Tell you what. Go in on them. Do some of that. Do some of that to you. Shoot them. Get away. Take them out. They won't survive a charge. Charge them. Oh, it's too easy, ladies and gentlemen. Don't even worry about it. Now, it's not fair to me for me to be so smug because we outnumbered them severely, but the point is to do this without taking many casualties. Run them off the field. I don't want them here anymore. <laughs> That's funny. More power. Bam! Where's Spellboy? Here he is. Ah, uh, yeah, they're already fleeing. Hit them with something before they go. Yes, torch them! Ah, oh, fun. Yeah, that gave him something to think about. So, yeah, not really doing that to flex, just to minimize the amount of casualties we take, and indeed we took 27 cat, 24 casualties, which is nothing. I would also love to do a Skaven campaign sometime, I really enjoy playing as Clan Moors, which is funny because they're the most basic Skaven faction, but something about where they start and uh, Queek himself just makes them really fun to play. I feel like I should prefer uh, Snitch or, what's his goddamn name, Ikiklor, I feel like I should prefer those two, but I prefer Queek every time. So, we can't gift it to a vassal, and there's no point occupying it ourselves, so I say, burn it. Get the souls, get a little bit of money, take it away from our enemy. And you know what, Zok, you've been such a good boy. Why don't you occupy it? All yours, buddy. Get a bit of that. So, things are going well. At least I like to think so. Quickly check in on the challenge stone. Yeah, everything's happening there that needs to. I could... Hmm. I could invest in another outpost right now, but more money would really be more important. Dominance. There are things you can recruit. Can't get any aspiring champions yet, which is a shame. We could get Chaos Spawn or more trolls. We do have a few too many dogs, to be honest. Which does sound like the thing I would do, because I love dogs. Ooh, we could upgrade our Chaos Trolls. There we go, now they have armor, which means they'll take less damage and are therefore less likely to flee. 
We could get some Marauder Horsemen, but it doesn't really suit our fighting style at the moment. I like Marauder Horsemen, I just don't think it's suitable. Hey, look, there's Village. My brother agrees. It might be worth going after him relatively soon because he's weakened and doesn't have a full army. We can just score a quick kill on him. Hmm. Possibilities. You gotta jump on opportunities as you see them, ladies and gentlemen. Can't just hang about hoping things go your way. You gotta seize the day. Take the opportunities. If Zok manages to sell Iron Storm this turn, we will get replenished. Come on, buddy. It's right there. You can do it. I believe in you. Village just destroyed the Dragon's Crossroads. That's about right. Zok, you failed me. Zok, you failed me. Zok, you failed me. You have failed me. You failed me for what is, I'm sure, not the last time. Yeah, you're mobilizing. Yeah, you could have got there this turn, you dick. Unbelievable. That's it. Now they're not replenishing this turn. Say so we move, start moving towards them, start making some moves, do some replenishment. Hopefully we get everything back. We got some stuff here. I like Forsaken, but I wouldn't say they're particularly good. They tend to- they are armored, but they tend to die pretty quickly. And they don't deal enough damage to make up for the fact that they are squishy and flimsy as hell, so I don't tend to go for them. Like I said, I like them. They're just not very good. You're better off having Marauders and having them become Chaos Warriors and shit. Gotta be honest. I think our army's the fine the way it is right now. Yeah, that's a lot of dogs, but... Kolek kind of makes up the bulk of our, like, main line and can hold the line for a long time. These guys can fill in if these guys start to falter. These guys are great as, um... opportunistic forces to pick off things that are by themselves or weak. And the Hell Cannon can soften up targets for them and all. So I think we're fine the way we are. In summary... I say for now, save up our money. Fingers crossed village stays there. I see, he just gave the Dragon's Crossroad to them. Oh, Bloodwind Keep is right there. Our friends just took Iron Storm, that's great. My rage is eternal. There is nothing I want but your obliteration. Are you going to offer that? No, funny enough, you're not. You just don't have anything I want, buddy. All I want is your Dark Fortress. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So Village is still there, and he's still weak. But we can't actually get to him this turn. And if we attacked him, Shan Liang would back him up. It's not ideal. I don't think we could actually do that this turn. I say we continue with our original plan. Take Bloodwind Keep. If we could, honestly, if we could sneak past Village and take his fortress from underneath him, we could subjugate him that way. Or force Confederation. I, am God. I would like to fight Village so that I can get the, uh, you know, the defeat trait, but I'm not above being a little sneaky. I'm only putting him in that stance because there's like nothing else. Actually, yeah, do that. Get more magic. I'm not above being a little sneaky. I'm not above being a huge shit. In fact, actually, I love doing that. In fact, it's hilarious. We want to focus on getting Vassal Emissary first because more control is great, and this also provides additional income from Vassal buildings, which you'd think would not help us very much, but it helps them get stronger. And the more money they're making, the more we get in tribute, which is why I let or why I even told our buddies to take Iron Storm. Because them becoming stronger is actually good for us. How do they feel about me, by the way? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're alright with me. They're alright with me. Can we trade? We can trade. You just don't really want to right now. <laughs> I think we're going to have a proper battle of Bloodwind because they're actually recruiting an army in there. So we're going to have to fight our way through more than just a garrison force. Maybe we can actually have a siege battle. That would be nice. I like those. They're fun. Considering that your vassals don't often get to fight very much and therefore their lords or their leaders tend to remain at a fairly low level, I'm going to say that. Now, if I'm right, that wasn't actually any of my places that just got damaged, so I don't feel bad about it. Nope, it was that place. They can deal with it. 
It makes them strong. Get a bit of that. Oh, yes. This has almost gone up to full, and I don't know what happens when it does. So that'll be interesting. You still can't get that. You're killing me. With how slow you are, it's killing me. There is a gift we can get that will change that, but we don't have access to it yet. Yes. Bring the storm. Yeah. We need to research it. It just occurred to me, one of our uh, Marauders is level 3, so now you cannot become- Oh, because it's rank 5. Motherfucker. I keep getting that confused with the trolls being able to become armored at level 3. What a pain. Alright, never mind. I got excited for nothing. Everyone go home. Fuck it. The series is trash and so am I. Skeleton warriors. Skeleton warriors. Skeleton ball. Okay, so because Kolek took so long to get to Bloodwind Keep, they have more troops now. Including some Chaos Furies, the garrison itself. Yeah, there's some decent stuff there. We heavily outnumber them, but they have the advantage of walls, of course. We might be able to turn that against them. A valiant defeat, you say? Oh, so I have to play this one. All right, well, if you insist. Okay, well, I'm fine with that. It just occurred to me, the Kolex stats aren't actually that good. He just hits like a truck and is durable as hell. Interesting. Now, is this actually going to be a fucking siege battle? Or am I being duped like last time? It's a siege battle. Okay, so we're going to be doing it for realsies. Alright, I have a plan. Don't know if it's a good one, but I do have a plan. Ah! Ah! <laughs> I want that to be my war cry. It's just everyone stood, we're getting ready to fight, and I'm just like, ah! So we do have Shatterstone, and I intend to make full use of it. I also have a plan for these Warhounds. That'll be a win win either way. You see, we deploy the Warhounds over here, because Warhounds are not very good at sieges, right? Direct conflicts, they don't like it. We set some over here. If they decide to place units over here, they are wasted. If they decide to not place units over here, the Warhounds will break down the doors and get in. Therefore, we win either way. Put them in the trees. A little bit of cover, perhaps. Arcane torment awaits. So we'll set our groups. You guys to there. Very well. You guys there, and then you guys. With that many Warhounds, they will overwhelm any unit that gets in their way, so they're not in too much trouble. Obviously, we're not charging them into the enemy's main line. Let's get in there and make some stuff happen. And you guys, go break down the wall. And you, get over there. And Shatterstone, uh, yes please. They did place units over there, what fools. Go break that wall instead. That has been destroyed, and now these guys can go in... They can just waltz right in. So I suggest they do it. I suggest that they do it. We have to be careful of those Chaos Furies, because they could go after our cannon, and that would be a problem. I bring a tempest. He brings a Tempest. Can't put it on the wall, sadly. Not a lot here to really hit with spells. Uh, try them, because they're weak. There we go. You can just go for them. Oh yeah, and they're wasting their furies attacking Kolek. Fucking brilliant. Go in on them. Big explosions. Let's shatterstone this for fun. It'll just kill another one of their units, basically. And let's watch it this time, because it'll be fun. Look at these guys chilling. They're having a great time. And now they're not... <laughs> <laughs> ah, fun. Ah, oh, good times. Ah, oh, you love to see it. You're being shot at. Shall we change that? The trolls won't like being shot by fire. Yes, indeed. This is nothing, huh? It seemed to affect you quite negatively. Shoot them. Because I stood there doing nothing. They're trying to move their units over here to reinforce the main line, but their main line is already crumbling. Big smash. 
You're not doing anything, then get down there and sort them out. You're not doing anything, then get down there and sort them out. Uh, you shot a bit too close to your friends there, guy. Try shooting them instead, if you would. I say we have magic to use, but there's almost no point. <laughs> it's just... It, you know what? Just get him involved in the fighting. Fuck it. He's a warrior wizard. He'll be alright. Be up Lothar. He's a bitch. Make sure they die. Yeah, this is a joke. You guys broke the... Yeah, you broke the gate a while ago. All right, neat. As you take more moral locations in siege battles, your units gain bonuses, so it's worth doing. Gates count towards momentum. You're not hitting much. You're just over here. I respect that. Now nah, they changed their minds. They had a feeling. They knew what I was about to do. Chaos will rain. You keep hitting our troops. Fucking stop it. You stop that now. Go to your room. Grounded. So fucking angry with you. Not even disappointed. Just angry. They're dead. Get down there and take them out. They'll probably run away, but give it a try. He's doing all right. Kolek, I really want you to go after him because he keeps causing problems. There we go. They've caught him. They've caught him a bit. Ah, oh, but they keep running. We'll be back. You won't be back. You're all going to die right now. He is crushing them. It's pretty funny. Take the spot and then run them down. They can't get away. They're not fast enough. Easy kills. For the chaos get down there and help out. Why are you facing the wrong way? Uh, answer the question. Why are you facing the wrong way, sir? I call him Kolak Sunnier, not Kolak Big Thinker. Am I right, guys? Yeah, I'm right. Okay, all right, okay. They're getting massacred. It's good. Not a lot to do around here at the moment, so you guys go find a point and take it, I guess. Go over there. They've been murdered. They're all coming in, so you guys scarper. Continue scarpering. Don't bother trying to engage those. It's a bad time. Honestly, by the time Lothar goes down, army losses should probably kick in. Tell you what we will do. You guys. Go over there and clean them up. We'll be back! We'll be back. Ba -ba -ba -ba. You know what? You two actually get out of there because you're suffering unnecessary casualties. Kolek actually has this covered. Don't even need to kill their lord. Beat them into submission. Did you get caught? You did. Not really, actually, just some of you are still over there. Take those gates. I don't know, for fun. How you doing, Kolek? Have you killed him yet? Are you winning, son? Oh, you're win. Oh, yeah, you're winning. Yeah, he's fucking dead. Cool. Kill him, too. Ba -ba -ba -ba. He took that. Loop around and take that. I'm too lazy to commit to attacking it. Yeah, army losses is kicking in. About fucking time. There we go. And say, I didn't see the point in setting up to engage more of their forces because I was like, the battle's over. It'll be over any second now. I don't want to, like, set up a complicated maneuver to get everyone around to engage what few forces they have left just for the game to be like, all right, you're done. Good job. Swimming with Manan, proverb meaning drowned. That's fun. 
it's rather unfair because the game was like, oh yeah, um, you know, valiant defeat, like this enemy force would win. But looking at it, I don't really see how they could have won. You'd have to pull some major tactics out of your ass to win a fight against the force we had. Because he didn't have any spellcasters or anything, he just had melee shit. All of his army is just melee shit. Now yeah, the use of towers and choke points might have helped him out, but... I just don't see him as being able to have won that. I don't know. I could subjugate him. I do want more vassals though, don't I? That was the thing I said. I'm gonna subjugate him. For those of you who want to know, that was not an optimal move, really. I should have taken Bloodwind Keep because the extra income from the Dark Fortress would have been more valuable than keeping this guy as a vassal. But like I said, I just want Kolek to be big. That is my only goal right now, is to make Kolek big. His mass has gone up to 6,900, so it's going up. It is happening. Lord of the Storm, thank you. I want you to defend the Fortress of Eyes in case Village starts getting ideas. But I think we just sneak Kolek down through here towards the for Red Fortress, whatever it's called. Yeah. Take it from Village and then enforce Confederation and we're good to go. Yes, I would. Get rid of them. Recruit them. Recruit them. Very good. Aspiring. I wouldn't honestly say aspiring champions are that good. I just like them. I like having them. This is opening. This is going to be a thing soon, whatever that means. Now, we want to make sure our allies, our new, our new vassal, doesn't get fucking bodied by the first person to look at him funny, so... Give him an outpost. Once we've taken the Red Fortress, we'll look into... Oh, maybe I should... Maybe next turn I should look into getting that quest item, or at least attempt it. Because I will save beforehand and reload the save if I fucking lose, I don't give a shit. But we might want to look into getting that. Give them an outpost too. Giving them a crater capacity to defend themselves will pay dividends. We're making about 100 in Vassal Tribute, it's not so bad, we're doing alright. But we're here for the power, that's what we want, we want the power. And I think when you enforce Confederation on a Warriors of Chaos faction, it technically counts as well as a subjugation, as making them your vassal, because I've noticed during my um, Bellacore campaign, I don't know if this is just a bug or whatever, but I enforced Confederation on the Ecstatic Legion to get Azazel into my horses, but it... The Ecstatic Legion also technically still existed and were a vassal, but didn't provide anything and didn't exist. You're gonna be a problem. Fine. To be fair, Grimgore is in the way, so that makes it awkward for him. But I might reassign the Dolgan to perhaps, um, you know, give them some trouble. Throw them off for a while until we can deal with them ourselves. You're defending that. I don't know where Village went. Which is always a cause for concern. I think, yeah, Kalan of the Gore Hunt is literally on his way to Gorger Rock right now. Or further down. Uh, well, he's got his own plans. He can keep them distracted while we go do what we want to do. And I think I want to try and get Star Crusher. So let's throw down a quick save. And by a quick save, I mean just a save. Yes. Yes, a nice save. And then... Oh, for God's sake, he's in a stance. Is he, is he in a stance? Yeah, is he in a fucking... Just assume, please. Except don't assume, because that's probably bad most of the time. But I know what I want. So... Green skins. We know this much. That's about all we know about this, actually. I've never fought this battle before. Pyrrhic victory. And that's not taking reinforcements into consideration. But I'm thinking with artillery... A decent... Quote-unquote decent front line. Kolek himself. Spells. Dragon ogres and chaos trolls. We should have this in hand. We could probably use our large number of Warhounds to run down their Wolf Riders. That probably won't be too tricky. He's looking quite big nowadays. Kolek, my guy, you're looking pretty big. I'm going to the gym. I'm going to the Chaos Gym. The Orcs and the Undead are no match for the mighty Shaggoth, yet together they can prove a significant threat. Deal with the fleeing greenskin mobs quickly, for the Undead will continue to summon more powerful servants to their thrall. So we're dealing with Undead as well. 
the great things that I'm living a life will bear witness to my wrath. They are mine to dismember, to disembowel, to crush. I will smash all that remains of these ruins to powder and not stop until my hammer is found. Understandable. And then the whole world will burn before I rest again. Such is my rage. This is the new pact I make to the dark powers. So yeah, something you may want to know about Warriors of Chaos before you play as any of them. Edgy as fuck, big edge, big angry all the time, most of them, even the ones that aren't um, dedicated to the god of anger, are angry all the time. They listen to Saint Anger on repeat all fucking day, they love Metallica. So, I am familiar with quest battles and I imagine Enemy reinforcements will probably pour in from the sides and destroy my hell cannon, so I might keep my trolls back, just in case. They could buy us some time to wrap things up, maybe. It's quite a narrow playing field, which might make things awkward for us in terms of, you know, dealing with them. But with with that, I mean, you know, should be too bad. Their war boss is on a wyvern, which makes him a bit dangerous, but he can't take Kolak, I don't think, and the dragon ogres could tear him apart as well. Glory. Are you there? So you guys there? My magic is ready. I might try and get our sorcerer Storm play silly buggers with them. There we go. They're in range, ready to be shot. Now where is their big you? Shoot them. Green flings flee before us, chase them down and destroy them. Are they actually Ooh. running away? They are, kind of. I bet Undead will come from up there. I bet that's how that works. Uh, undead will come from up there, and then they will reform their lines and fight us all at the same time. We might want to do something about that. Now would be the good time to do that. Do some damage. Very good. You guys push up, take them out, please. Good, good, good. Okay, good, okay, good, okay, good. He lands, take him out. You run. Don't you want to have left behind? Just them. If this works the way I think it will, we'll actually want to push the trolls up. Where's my sorcerer? He's alright, he's safe now. Very good. Black Orcs there, that's not ideal. Stirred the undead and fell back to swarm at our rear. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. You thought I didn't predict this. I did. I did predict this. Get in on them and take them out. Uh, this is going to be a messy fight, that's for sure. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's going to be messy. Focus on him. I want him dead. Okay, that's good. Now, you guys um, are not actually going to do very well against Black Orc, so I want you to swarm around the back instead. They lost. Send one unit of armor trolls up to deal with them. You're doing fine. Oh, that's fun. Um, this is less fun. Leave it for now. Deal with them. Go in their back. Okay, things are fine. Those Black Orcs are an issue, but they're currently not fucking doing anything, which is pretty funny. In fact, you know what? Shoot them. Quickly deal with them, because they're tying up. Uh, 
can't remember his name. Kolek, they're dying him up. It's no good. Killed a bunch of them. I wonder, can we aim this just right? Just about. Where is our sorcerer? There he is. Not really a lot you can do. A lot of his spells require hitting large groups by themselves. You two, go back and kill him. Good shit. Warriors flee. Honestly, it's not that bad. More undead arrive. Larger. Stronger and larger than the last. Yeah, I thought they would. Ah, oh, Vargas. Fuck those things. So we're dealing with them. Good timing. Kolek, get over there. They're fucks. Don't even worry about them anymore. All of you go in on them. I'm actually not seeing any fucking undead to our rear, so let's send the trolls over to help. That looks messy. That is messy. See if you can provide them with a bit of relief. You're doing your best. How's our sorcerer doing? Let's see if we can get him out of there, because that's not a good scene for him. Drawn a terror geist. For God's sake, just let us win the fight. Stop throwing more things at us. Go after them. Form up. Move around here. You're doing fine. Ugh, that's scary. Come back down to deal with that. Go in on them. If you can kill their shaman, that'll help us out immensely. You're not under attack, that's good. Oh my god, an entire army? Are you fucking serious? God, piss. Alright, push up a bit. Go in on them. I bring a tempest. Make sure they leap. Actually, better yet. Loop round. Go in on them. You loop round and make sure he dies. There we go. Hopefully that'll clip them as they come through. No, they're not moving. That's unfortunate. <laughs> that didn't hit them at all. Okay, brilliant. Good. All right, that's what I wanted. Yeah, it was to not hit them. Yeah, uh, it was just a... It's just an intimidation tactic, you know? Start firing on them as soon as you can. He needs to die quickly before they show up. Screw it, get them on them. You actually keep moving up instead of firing, because we're going to want to start hitting the undead lines with as much firepower as we can. We'll have the dogs take care of him, it'll be easier. Sorcerer boy, we need your help. Now, they have physical resistance, but fortunately, I think dragon ogres are strong enough that that doesn't matter. <laughs> Tell you what, you go up there, deal with them. Are you guys done yet? You are, okay, brilliant. Form up your line. Let's see what we're working with. You push up. There's a lot here that can be destroyed with some good fire spells. If you guys can take out the Hex Wraiths quickly enough, you can go on to dealing with them. Dragon Ogres are worth their weight in fucking gold, and let me tell you, they're heavy. They are chunky as fuck. They're down. Okay. Now you guys get away. You do not want to engage Crypt Horrors, let me tell you that, for free. That is for free. Why don't you go over there and help out? Get in there and fuck them up. Very good. Now you're over here. Perfect. Big damage. Shoot in on there. You move around. I noticed you just got hit by something. I think it was like a... Uh, Eyes of Nagash or whatever. You know that spell. Yeah, that spell. Yeah, we all know that spell. Everyone form up just in case this does come to a melee conflict because we're going to need to be ready. Hit him with a fireball. I don't like him. I want him to suffer. And we got plenty of magic anyway, so fuck it. You guys get ready to hit him in the back. You lot. Charge in. Just start charging him. Sorcerer. You start falling back. You don't need line of sight. Use burning head. 
I'm like, hey girl, what's your burning head like? <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure is a joke that involves an STD of some kind. I don't know. Hey man, I just work here. Hit them with a little bit of something to just reduce their numbers. Good, good, very good, very, 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 very good. The amount of fucking dead things there is incredible. You're going for our wolves? No, you're not. <laughs> Why engage when you don't have to? Go over there and make sure. Oh, yeah, that grave guard and all. That's scary. Uh, Kodak, do you still have that ability? Yeah, you do. We inflict enough kills. The fight will just be over. I mean, you did something. It's all right. Yeah, I'm not surprised. You start coming back because we're. I'm looking. To, I'm seeing some juicy opportunities for spells right now, and I'm not taking advantage of them. And that. That's a problem. Skeleton warriors. I think you can take care of them. Actually, screw that. Hit them instead. You know what? If those marauders are going to flee, they're going to suffer the consequences. You know what I mean? Big damage. Big, big damage. Your melee skill... Oh, you've got... No, you're, you're both weak. Fuck it. Go for them. Big damage. They've got a break soon. There's no way they're going to stay in the fight. Not after all this. I'm not sure if he can handle them, actually. Two bitch-ass nerds is still more than the one him. It's our large units that are really picking up the slack right now. Uh, marauders are starting to falter, but... Uh, the trolls and ogres, uh, they're doing just fine. Kolex suffered a bit, but he's doing okay. Are you actually going to kill these guys, or...? You can do what you want, but I'd really like it if you killed them. Try and speed this up a little bit. These guys are needed elsewhere. Plus, Burning Head isn't very strong against um, low-entity number units like Shaggoths, so we don't have to worry about the friendly fire too much. They're almost gone. Just a little bit more. Come on, lads. Nearly gone. In with a fireball. Yeah! It's funny. At the very least, keep them away from the artillery. We don't want them hitting that. They're out of ammo now. They scored a good amount of kills, though. It's respectable. Hit him with a little bit of that. Yeah, that caused him to run away, which actually serves our purposes just as well. Just slowed them down. In cases like this, a lot of our work involves buying time while we chew through their weaker units. Get in there and kill them. Loop round. They brought in reinforcements, you back off. That will not hurt Kolek very much. You know what? Given that situation the way it is, why don't you all go in on the Master Necromancer and murder him? Because it'll be funny. Just picking on an old man. It's hilarious. I recommend you try it sometime. We almost got him. We almost got him. Honestly, the battle really should have ended by now because we have trashed them. We've inflicted... It's probably because we've taken so much damage as well that army losses haven't come into play. Wait, army, enemy troop count is zero. I have questions. More than a few. Collect's doing great. Look at this fucking mess. They're getting bullied. They are getting straight up bullied. Yeah, um, I'll tell you what, actually, what we'll do. You guys can back off, because you're not needed in there anymore. The large units can take care of this. Yeah, army losses. Thank fuck. Took long enough. Back. 
Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. Pyrrhic victory. I mean, yeah, technically. <laughs> Luckily, they did add something to this, uh, to Total Warhammer 3, which is when you win a quest battle, you get massively increased replenishment next turn. Which we're going to need, because most of our troops got fucked up. But you'll notice that the Dragon Ogres and Trolls didn't suffer any fucking casualties at all. All they did was smash. Kolek, you can tell, got really involved. Our sorcerer did pretty well. It was less than a thousand of us versus around 2,500 of them. And they had some Black Orcs and stuff, and Graveguard, like they weren't fucking around, the Terrorgeist, Fargeists. It was a proper force. I wish I didn't have six units of Warhounds for this though, I have to say. More, more trolls or more marauders would have been more useful. <laughs> But they fought well too, it's fine. And the Hell Cannon crippled a lot of their units before they could really do much. I can't believe they had a unit of Black Orcs with most of their fucking units in health left and just didn't get to use it. That's sad for them. So we didn't lose any of our units, that's great. Let's get some of that replenished. We could get the souls, but replenishment really is what we want right now. We've got plans. Mage Hunter, lovely. And we got Star Crusher. Yes, good, 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 good. And we will get most of our units back come next turn. Which puts us on course to take the Red Fortress. Head over there, you're still replenishing. Start generating more winds of magic. So we always need more magic. Magic is great. Magic is chaos. Get more of that. Premonition. Ambush defense chance. You don't want to be ambushed, it sucks. Star Crusher, which has boosted his attack significantly, which is just fucking great. My dude, you leveled up, and you also got Mage Hunter, which increases your spell resistance and gives you a missile and spell resistant aura that you give to nearby people. It's a shame because he doesn't spend a lot of time in our lines. He's typically, you know, running around and doing stuff like sorcerers tend to do. Lovely jubbly. No upgrades to be done. I think we'll keep the Poison Warhounds, but start phasing out the um, regular ones, because we don't really need them. We've got a bit of money, so get rid of you. Get some Forsaken. That's good. Get rid of you. Get some Chaos Spawn. And that just gives him a little bit more muscle in his army. Now, we've got a lot of money. Let's invest it. It aids the meat. Yeah, yeah, the meat ritual. Yeah, I know what you mean, bruv. The meat ritual. Yeah, bruh. know exactly what you mean, bruh. Ha <laughs> ha, do all the time. <laughs> what, what are we talking about? What, what are we actually talking about, buddy? You gonna... You gonna come clean with me? What are we... What are we on about? The meat ritual, yeah? Yeah, what do you, what do you mean by that? That's something you and your ogre buddies do. You sit in a circle. Meat ritual. Yeah. I ain't judging, just why give it a fancy title, man? Just call it what it is, you know? Things have gone well thus far. I just want to get to that Red Fortress and take it down. Because if we can enforce a confederation while, um... Village is still active, then we could use his army. I don't know, go attack the fucking gate. The wall. Smash it. Do big chaos things. Then maybe Kolek could go back towards the Ogres and deal with them. Ah, he's got another army, eh? Where is Village, though? I saw him and then he disappeared. Ah, oh, I don't like that. I think he's trying to do what I'm doing. Of course. Hmm. Well, if my plan works, then everything will be fine. If my plan doesn't work, then whoops, I guess. Red Fortress down there. You're almost fully replenished. That's good. I heard that's good. We have Warriors of Chaos under our command, which is quite nice. They can just go around and do stuff. Enforce my will. It's nice to have an army of underlings. It's fun. I like it. Makes me feel more like the big bad of a game film or D&D campaign where I have minions and sub-forces, sub-factions that serve my big faction. 
Got full replenishment. There's the red fortress. It's going to be quite difficult to take, but I think we can do it. We'll attempt it today either way. Go for that. It serves the dark powers, and don't you forget it, box buster. And here's what we'll do, just to ensure our own safety, because safety, village is around here and it's a problem. We'll get Entero. You can't recruit anything, but I guess his very presence here does help a little bit. Oh no, we can get something, we can get something. Oh yeah, we can get something. Get some Marauder Berserkers. They're good units. Challenge Stone doesn't have a big garrison, but I think with their assistance we can probably succeed in holding off Village, if nothing else. We probably won't need to use them, but it's just a precaution to make sure he doesn't sneak the Challenge Stone away from us, because having to rebuild it would be frustrating. Decasur Malthastire. Sorry, buddy, but you're not going to live to become part of the Her Heralds of the Tempest, because uh, we have to smash you in order to take the Red Fortress. Hello, your actions have drawn the attention of the Chaos Gods. Though they are fickle, you can perhaps direct their attention to a particular area. However, there is always a price to be paid. Passive Horrible Regeneration for Chaos Spawn Units and plus 100% weapon strength for them. That's nice. That's fine. Eh, these are underwhelming. War is the proving ground. Because Kolek's about to attack that, so he'll get big experience. So, let's actually evaluate something quickly. Yes, the puppets only have one settlement. We take their Dark Fortress, and presumably we can enforce Confederation. We're in position. Things look okay. Let's check their forces. For Standard Chaos Lord. They've got some pink horrors, which are a pain, but we should be able to deal with. Some warhounds. And the garrison itself is very standard. So we should be all right. My concern isn't winning the battle. I think we've got that under wraps. My concern is that this won't work the way I think it will. And then Village will just be in my territory with a large army, very angry. Mortals will yes, mortals will quail, but we might be the mortals that quail. I don't know. It depends how this goes, really. You dare? Let's take the Red Fortress and see what the fuck happens. This better be worth my time. I think the outcome will be favorable to everyone when you join my forces, uh, but you know, I've still got to win the battle first. Stormcrusher yearns! Yearns! Yearns, Queen! I mean, I could aura resolve it, but that would be a bit of a. Bit of a letdown for the end of the episode. This will be like the last thing we do, I think, for today. Similar army going up against the same kind of fortress with a similar kind of force. So I think our tactics are going to be near enough the same. There's no real reason to change them, to be honest. Pop you guys over there. Hopefully I remember them, because if I forget, they will just get shot to death. Chaos Marauders. Mortals. You hide in the trees again. Uh, yeah, and then you're on your- you, you're separate, because you've got your own thing to do. Group them up, group them up. Everybody, group up. Corn's bloody glory. Good stuff. All right. Let's hit him. Let's hit him. Let's go. Take out their pink horrors, because they're the things that are actually going to cause us problems. They don't appear to have actually set anything up over there, so go for it. They're mostly gone, which is very good. Instead of breaking down the gate, just go straight in and start smashing things. There's fuck all of them left, so their ranged attacks aren't going to do much damage. Their arrows are predictably hitting the Forsaken, who are dying in mass. What else is new? 
We're a sorcerer, boy. Oh, I haven't told you to move. move Alright, go over there. You can do with some of your spells. Okay, well, go for them. Go for them. This is good. This is good. Big hits. Good, good, good. Alright, okay, good. Not a lot you can do with your spells at the moment. Just sadly, they just got off the wall or I would have hit them with a bit of the old sh... They don't know what they're doing. Hit them with that instead. Well, they figure it out. You guys run in, I guess, because I don't know why you didn't join on the walls, but it's okay. He's absolutely crushing those fucking warhounds. There's nothing up there to contend us, so skip it and just go running in instead. Get up there and help fight them. Make sure it's okay. I'll tell you what, actually. Ah, uh, yeah, we can go a little bit sneaky with this. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. That crippled them. The gates are open, so come in. Make yourselves at home, lads. How are you guys doing? You've broken the gate? Very good. Go take that, because we might be able to end the battle early. As if they didn't have enough to worry about, we also outpace them, and outnumber them, and surround them, and generally, it's not a good time for them. These guys aren't even doing much. Pile in on him and kill him. You, you're fine. Hit him with some lightning, it'll be funny. There is nothing to worry about. No, no, no. Stop, cancel. Oh, he's not going to cancel it. That might actually work out, though, because it might bounce off the wall and come back. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Ah, it's not good. Let's just be real. It wasn't good. It wasn't very good at all. He's getting his shit wrecked. He's not doing much better. They're capturing the gate. You stay there. You come down and help out. You're taking care of them. Get up there and deal with them. Because you've taken that now. Yeah, yeah. They're getting absolutely wrecked by Kolek. <sighs> it's nice to just sit back and uh, have things go well. You guys are taking the town center. Which is very good. This will not last long. No, not all of them. Just them. Hit them. He's dying. Is he on horseback? No, that's a shame, because if he was, the ogres would be kicking his ass extra hard. They're taking that. Very good. You go deal with them. You guys... Start making your way down. Go on, Kolek. Go on, Karlek, beat him up. Go on, Karlek, beat him up. Yes. Beat him up, Karlek, beat him up. He's just knocked him over by walking into him. That's the power of mass. Just like Sir Isaac Newton said, I like him thick. I mean, the greater the mass, the greater the force of attraction. <laughs> Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, you'll love to see it. They're tearing those Chaos Trolls apart. We're currently winning because we control the town center, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, you know. They could try and launch counterattack, but they don't have anything left, really. Hunt them down. Good stuff. Victory! Ah, oh, you love to see it. With fuck all casualties, actually. That was easy. 
I'm definitely starting to get the hang of the new sty uh, style of um, Siege Battle, but to begin with, they fucked me up. Because I kept trying to do my hang back and use artillery and magic shit, and it did not go well. Sometimes that is the strategy, but it's not a uh, fix-all for any situation anymore. Sometimes you got to charge in and deal with them. And it's fun. It's a fun way to fight. That's how video games should be. The game design, the game mechanics should be designed around forcing you to do the thing that is most fun and enjoyable. Instead of, you know, optimal strategy, sit there and spam something over and over again because it's easier. In this case, it's actually better to engage with the siege mechanics and attack the place. Or maybe there are exploity top level strategies that involve just sitting around doing nothing, but we all got to agree that this is a more fun way to play. Nice. Am I not in Force Confederation? I usually can. Do I have to defeat Village's army now in order to do that? Either way, we've now vassalized the uh, Associated Norskin faction, so that's pretty good. Kolek will have gone bigger. Yep, 7,202 now. He's getting bigger. Storm Rage? Yeah, I like that. Or could get Moving Mountain. I want Moving Mountain for the big thickums. Storm Rage. Yep. We'll get this stuff later. Now let's see how big he is. 8,702. Kolek, I want you to step out of here for a moment. I think he's getting bigger. He's bigger than that C. Of course, it's a perspective thing, isn't it? Better be worth my time. We're not actually allowed to um, confederate him. Interesting. All right, well, I guess we'll kill him then. A shame, but no big deal. No big deal. We can just keep Entero. He can be our guy. He can be our dude. A oh, buddy, a go-to guy. Ah! <laughs> I love that shit. He'll have a decent army because he'll have Marauder Berserkers who are being encouraged by aspiring champions and the more Berserkers fights, yeah, the better they get. And we're frenzied to keep their leadership up. Yeah, 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 that could work out quite well. Do that, we'll spread more chaos down here. And then next time, I suppose, Olek will probably go after this lot. To touch a dragonborn is blasphemy. Yeah, so is your mom. My will does not bend. We unlocked horrifying presence, which is decent, but I'm not sure. Hmm. Actually, that'd be a good replacement for Raiders Raymond. Because eventually we're going to start turning our Marauders into, you know, Chaos Warriors and then Chosen. And we'll want them to, uh, you know... Plus that's experience for all undivided units, not just Marauders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get rid of that. Get that. Speaking of which, can you do that yet? Not yet, but get in there. I awake! All right, but that's all I've got time for today, ladies and gentlemen. We've made some decent progress. Turn 17, and we've already expanded over here and basically destroyed Village, so that's a good start. We'll start hitting um, Hithay's Great Wall soon, probably, and we'll see how that goes. Kolek is already getting bigger, but I know we can make him even bigger than that. That's nothing. Those are baby numbers. There are plenty of factions we can subjugate in order to make that happen. Yes, my ruinous powers! Incidentally, I'm not overly attached to Entero's name here, so if you're watching this and you're like, I want to be one of the lords, let me know. And you can take this guy's place. Don't know how many lords I'm going to get at this point, because, you know, there are a ton of legendary lords you can get playing as uh, Warriors of Chaos. But, hey, I'd be happy to put you in here. But I digress, and I'm rambling. Thank you so much 
for watching. Special thanks to Sweet Baby Red, MB Alias, The Old Man River, Lord Scullington, Jessica Kitty, Plutonium Pie, Dreamer Ghost, Leper Lullaby, K Pub, Map K Pup, K Bob, Magic Cow, The Frostbite, Monsoon, Sir World, Jumping with Joy, Warmaster Oku, SCP 106A, Nomad, and Kenny T800 for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys, and thank you all so very much for watching and for indulging me in doing a series that is just generally what I enjoy. I enjoy everything I do, but this is something I'm admittedly a little more fixated on and have been for a very long time. I don't intend to let this um, affect Hollow Knight too much. Hollow Knight is still going ahead, but uh, I guess I just wanted to do this on days where I'm like, I don't fancy doing Hollow Knight or anything else today, I just want to play something I want to play, and then I can come back to this series and keep doing it. And it could be a long form thing, we'll go through other legendary lords and whatever, I don't know, it's all potential stuff for the future, I haven't really planned it out, I'm just playing around with ideas. It's the joy of running your own channel, of course, but I digress. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Where happens next time, and the Great Wall of Not China. Yeah, we're gonna take that. It's gonna be ours. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope I see you there. Doodles. Goodbye.